one, which is the one in Kamana. This is when we first went to them to ask permission to start doing that environmental assessment. After that, we had a community meeting here um, on April 16, 2009. There was 19 people that attended. I wanted everyone to know, too, I wrote on the bottom, that we have 149 different addresses within a 500-foot buffer around the property. So I know that some people are not on that list, and I don't know why. Um, that list does come from the state, but I know that some people aren't on it for some reason. But the ones that we did have, um, again, we didn't send some people on multiple properties. We just sent it to one. Um, so we did send it to 149 different people. Um, then what happened on January 13, 2011, the BLNR approved the lease, saying yes, you can have that property for X amount of money. Um, and we began the DA process. We had another community meeting on June 3rd, 2011. That was here again at the Crest Building, which will be in attendance. On September 2nd, 2011, we had another community meeting up in Kamana. Um, Kamana Elementary, I think a lot of you were there. We had 35 people at that one. And um, on April 27th, we did, again, another community meeting up at Kamana Elementary. And I didn't get the total on who was in attendance. What we did the following day, on Saturday, April 29th, what, what we thought was, um, a lot of people couldn't come to that Friday night meeting for whatever reason. So what we thought was, we would go around to the different homes around the area and give them the information from the night before. So that way you folks knew what we talked about. And also there was a, uh, I think it was called My Thoughts, I think it was the card. Basically you folks could write down information, mail it back to us, questions, concerns, comments, so that we can go ahead and respond. Um, so that's what we did on the 28th. We did a walk around. We started um, on Edita Street and walked all the way up to Melimano, uh, up, up to the top, and gave all of those houses there. Of course, if someone's house said no trespassing, we didn't go. We had a bunch of kids go up there with us. Um, then what we did on December 17th, that's today's meeting. Today, again, is another community. So what I wanted to, again, for me, this is good, because this shows that we've done five or six different community meetings trying to get information and, and why this is helpful for me is because that shows that we're trying, we want to try and answer your questions but also get feedback on our side also. I know there's a lot of things that has transpired from this first date up until today. I know there's a lot of things that have transpired and what I do want to say is that, um, you know, Sue Lilo and I, we talk all, of, all the time and one of the things that we have said is no matter what happens with the property, we honestly want to be good neighbors. We really do. We want to try and help and however we can figure out anything, whatever. If we're doing something wrong, I apologize right off the bat. I had a great conversation with Jason one day and, and it was an ugly situation, but it was a great conversation in my opinion. I, you know, it was a terrible reason why we met, but I'm glad we met. It was a great conversation and that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that the communication is open so that you folks know that um, we want to be open. We want to be able to communicate and give as much information as we can. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing that um, or any reason for us to hold any information back from you folks at all. So again, if there's anything like that, I want to make sure you guys know that too, that we can go ahead and give whatever information that you need. Um, but basically today, I know it was suggested at the, uh, the Planning Commission meeting that we have another meeting like this to try and bridge whatever we need to, basically. And that's what we want to do. We want to try and bridge whatever gaps, whatever informational gaps that are there. Because I think um, there are a few things on both sides that people might have misunderstood or it came out and it maybe it was conveyed in the wrong way and didn't. And anything from our side, I want to apologize right off the bat because that's definitely not what we wanted to do from day one. And if it did come out that way, I apologize because a lot of that would be my fault. I'll take the blame for all of it, um, because this has been my baby from before this even started. So um, again, I do apologize for any misunderstandings, but I want to I wanna open up today for questions, or clarifications, or comments, anything that you folks might have that we can answer, we can help, we can clarify, um, whatever that is. So please, anyway. Yes, sir. Can you, can you give me your name, please? Yeah, my name is Dwayne. Dwayne? Dwayne. Dwayne. Yes. Dwayne, great. My question is, I'm not sure whether I understood what was said at the last um, uh, 
Commission hearing, but you selected the property because of its size. Is that correct? That's one of the reasons, yes. We were given seven different parcels. So I understand that. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. But it was stated, I, I think I heard, or what I thought I heard, but it was selected because it, it had to be 50 acres or larger in order to have a K-12 school. Maybe you can answer that better. I think that's what I understood John to say too, the principal, that yes, it needs to be X amount of size for a K-12 school. So, with that in mind, a K-12 school for 50 acres would be a fairly substantial size school, mm -hmm. more than what the coast is projecting. So, the size to me, if you're saying that your high school will be small, there's no need for 50 acres. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing is, if you're going to do agriculture, yes. that's not a good place for agriculture. You don't see any farms around there. You don't see any kind of agricultural development. That's the reason why I assume Mr. Brohati was able to purchase the property and put up a subdivision because there's no best use. Agriculture is really tough. And the third thing is the projection on your cost. Mm -hmm. From my experience in running a public school, I don't see how you're supposed to do it. With the cost of the, the total cost? Yeah. yeah. And you have no financial commitment. So I don't want to see something built there that goes, that is not um, maintain reverts back to the state and the state has to take care of it. And it doesn't fit into our property. And the other thing is, you know, you talk about trust, the trust has been broken. And that's one of the big things. Everybody's just focusing in on the end, a school for children to get a better education. But the process that you've gone through, you've alienated many people in the community. And just based on that, you're not welcome. So to me, my recommendation on one of the meetings I went to, and I did not say it to anybody, but Lapa Hoy is a much better facility. The infrastructure has already been built. They have a substantial uh, home economic, uh, I'm sorry, not home economics, but they have, they have uh, facilities for uh, building and construction. They have a lot of land. They have soil there. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. So, I mean, yeah, folks have just done it poorly. You know, and the, the end doesn't justify the means that you've got about doing this. I really think you should consider going somewhere else. Great, I appreciate your comments. I know. Um, it, again, I take it personal when you say that the way we did things, because again, I've been here from the beginning. No, what I, what I mean is, what I mean is, I I take it upon myself to apologize because this school and other schools, you're supposed to have a board, aren't you? Yes, we do. Yeah. So yes. where's your board member? They should be responsible. Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. we all are. We all but the board members are responsible for what happened. The administration is supposed to be the group that implements it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I haven't heard of any board member. I don't know who's on the board, but I haven't heard of the board member. Okay. So, as part of the process, we call my understanding of how uh, it was set up, it's supposed to be the board decision. So, I haven't heard the board come to champion this call. So, it sounds like it's more an administrative matter, and I assume it would be because the board says the final location. Okay. But from my perspective here, is that folks have, I go back again, folks have a funny job. Is you're supposed to be part of the heart of the community? But you're not in this heart. And I just don't, I 
as close to the other way out. And that's, and that's exactly why I think we're trying so hard to fix that. Because from the beginning, we have always felt that, and again, I know things have gone astray. I, I understand that. But from the beginning, we have always tried to, to walk the right way, to inform, to, to do whatever we could legally, the right way, to get the objectives done. You um, haven't done a good job. I'm sorry? You haven't done a good job. It's never that's why the uh, protest from the community, the testimony from the community. You haven't done a good job. And that's more of an indication of how things will transpire in the future. You haven't been able to develop the trust in the beginning. The only way I can see having any trust in the future is to have it done legally, contractually, with specifics about what you will or will not do as you proceed. But right now, the trust is gone. And, and, I, and again, I think that's where, what we're trying to build. I think that's what we're trying to, trying to do. We're trying to fix that. It, whether, whether it's, however it's perceived, I think what you're saying right now is we're automatically never going to build a relationship with the school. That the community doesn't want us in, the, in their backyard. That's basically what I hear. Yeah. And that's, so that's where I'm trying to, I'm trying to come and say, how can we, how can we fix that? How can we help? How can we, because we have been forthcoming with all the information that, we, that we've had. And I know you're shaking your head and I'd love to, for you to please respond. What did you do? Kind of change your mind using the mouth a lot. How did you do that? That decision came after I think it was the first um, community meeting in Kalbana, if I'm not mistaken. Because of, um, so you're saying June of uh, 2011? I, I can't say exactly, but one of the community meetings that we had, the community came in and had huge concerns about the case. Um, so we went back, we did more research, and said, you know what, we're not even going to touch the top piece of the property, we'll use that as conservation. And we'll build our camp, and that's where we shifted to the lower parcel and be reserving the top as much as possible. That's when we made that So here's decision. my point, and here's, here's our real problem, mm -hmm. is that we didn't hear about that change in your decision until three men with machetes walked into my backyard in June of this year. The next day, a D9 came through and damaged our property, you know, completely destroyed the forest behind our house. And that was the first time I have ever heard from Connection School when you and Jason had a, had a, had a meeting out in uh, our driveway or thereabouts. That's not a way to build a relationship with the community. We were never informed that any of that would happen. This is literally our backyard. This isn't, you know, something you can see off in the distance. Literally, that D9 came through, took down three of our fruit trees, damaged another one, completely destroyed the forest behind our house, and that was the first we had ever heard about it. So I just, I don't know how you can say that you've done all of these things, you, you've been forthright with all of your information, when we live literally adjacent to where the bulldozers came through, and I was never informed. We never received a letter, you never walked to our house, no one ever let us know that any of this was going to happen. And, and this is what he's speaking about, trust. This is, and, and once that has happened, I don't see, I don't see how it's really and just please realize that the way to start bridging a trust is not to hold a meeting at noon on a Monday. I mean, you would, I, I wish we could share all the emails that went around frantically from people saying, how is that a community meeting? How is meeting at your Crest facility at noon on a Monday the first step in bridging trust by really reaching out to the community? This should be, this whole chart should be inverted. You should have had all of these meetings before that March 28th to ask the community, hey, what do you think about a school in your community? And had that taken place, we wouldn't be here because the answer has been the same all along. We have two schools. We don't need another school. Please find an area that needs a school. You know, we support the idea, we support education. We have two schools. None of our kids are going to go to the school. So why are you doing this? Find an area that needs a school, like La Cojona, like out in the District. 
who desperately needs a school, who frankly, most of your kids are probably coming from in the first place, and build it there. But to say that you know, our first notification is three quarters of the way through the process, and, and you've got a broken trust issue and you're building that with a meeting at your facility at noon on a Monday is absolutely ludicrous. And if you think you're really building trust, you're not. So when you get to your new location, do it the right way. Have six meetings before you decide you're gonna put something in somebody's backyard. Because this is not the way to do it. And if you can find people in the community that are supportive, bless you. But I think you know, his comments are mirrored to everybody. Everybody's really upset because you have broken trust and you're not showing us that you want to change this at all. And so when somebody says it's not fixable, it's not. Because you haven't made any effort to try to fix it. You're just trying to cover up what you've done and cover the mistakes you've made. And it's very apparent to me. And I hope when you get to your new location, you do it the right way. We are all supportive of education. Just, you got to do it the right way and you can't. Eventually, you're just going to have to say, this is too broken. And, and the only way to fix it is to try again someplace else. And that's all we're saying. That's all I'm saying. And, and I think a lot, I think the reason, again, the reason for this is just basically to, to for me, again, because I'm a visual, I needed to see this this morning, how many times we have come to the community and said things, and plans have changed through community meetings. Um, I said at the very beginning, I know that this is an, an ideal time for a meeting. I know it's not. But with different things, my, the principal can't be here. I'm leaving Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday for a while. I have two doctor's appointments after. So unfortunately, this is where we could have the meeting. And I, you know, and again, I, I said at the beginning, I know it's not ideal. But I guess the hard part for me, I'll, I'll be Frank, I'll be totally honest. The hard part for me is that I have three individuals from the community, which, which I'm trying to do what I can with. But I have three individuals that have already said, no matter what you do or say, we're done and everybody agrees with us. And I, we haven't said that. He said, well, that's his point. Right. I but said, then that's you said, my opinion. And right. I ended with, and it was probably recorded, that's my opinion. Right. Right. And I'll leave it to the rest of the community. To but say what, what I'm saying is that's, that that's what I'm hearing, that it's already already set in stone we know we don't want it and so this is where I think and again how else I, I want to try and do whatever I can so how else I know when you and I had the talk I know you mentioned about breaking down your things but when we talked those things were actually on our property and I mentioned to you that time we're talking about her. she's talking about the trees that filled the day after that D9 left the trees that you nicked putting up that fence coming up just as close as you possibly could not just having courtesy and respect for somebody's property and say, you know what, if we had moved the bulldozer three feet over, we probably could have saved all their fruit trees. That's, that's all we're talking about here. You know, just common courtesy and respect. It would not have changed your fence line, would not have changed your plans, just to say, you know what, I can tell those are fruit trees that, are, that they're using that are on their property, that add to their property value. Maybe we move that bulldozer over three feet. I completely about. agree. Okay, but then, but then how would you feel if you found out later that everything I was told on that property was not true? That you didn't have the authority to run that D9, that you didn't have the authority to put up that fence? How is that trust? I mean, you can't just say, well, you know, we need a duel. Trust has been broken, mm -hmm. right? And again, whatever, but why would we want to build trust with somebody who has lied to us, who has misinformed us, who hasn't done this. This is a great visual, and if we'd received those notices, it would be even better. But this is, it's like it's made up, you guys. Well, because it's not. This is actually... Okay, then show me the letters that went to my house. What well, else? Because they didn't. Not just the letter, but the actual mailing list, because I think most of us in the community received nothing, because the letter of the law said you have to notify your social it's right there. Here, in, in each one of these tabs, there's an individual tab for every meeting, except the walkthrough. That's great, so, but this didn't come in my house. So what I'm saying is in each one of these is the mail-out list, okay. and also I, I attached the, the questions and answers that we hear, the use of facilities that we use. Everything is in that. So again, what, what also I'm going to come back and say is, we do something today, right? 
and we do everything that we're thinking is, is the right thing to do, whether we're told that by someone else, whether